Whether you've officially decided to book your campsite at Lake George RV Park, or you remain on the fence about your options in the area, I'm here to tell you all the reasons why I absolutely loved my stay at this campground. Hop on in as we enjoy a virtual tour through the campsites and stick around until the very end when I'll share a few must-do things nearby. Lake George RV Park has consistently been awarded among the top camping destinations, not only in the Adirondacks, but in the country. This was our first trip here and to set the stage we visited during the pandemic, specifically late September 2020. It's important to keep this in mind because there was quite a bit closed due to social distancing policies and also just being there very late in the season. Regardless, there was still plenty to do and we certainly enjoyed a top-notch experience. I'm going to throw a map up right here to give you guys a feel for the sheer scale of this campground and I'll leave it up to reference throughout the tour. This is the check-in building and also the camp store, which was very well stocked. Firewood could be purchased from here and picked up right outside. As we drive into the campground, we are greeted with the largest chunk of campsites, which I'll refer to as the main area. These sites are all very wooded, yet not completely secluded. Each plot felt spacious, well-kept, and unique from one to the next. Most of these spaces were pull-throughs. Every site at the campground comes with water and electric, sewage, cable TV hookups, free Wi-Fi, which worked flawlessly, and a picnic table and fire ring. The main camp area borders quite a few sports turfs, including a softball field and pickleball courts. You'll also find bocce, shuffleboard, volleyball, and horseshoe pits nearby. I wanted to also point out the amenities in the front of the campground that I didn't have the opportunity to personally explore. Those include a pool, bingo pavilion, bonfire pavilion, more horseshoe pits, fitness center, laundromat, cinema, and arcade. I mean, there's literally something for everyone. No excuses. Continuing deeper into the campground and past the dog park and tennis courts, we enter the east side facilities and campsites, which is where we called home for the first three days of our stay. The east, in my opinion, is where it's at as far as recreation is concerned. Though almost everything was closed, I could imagine how much fun this spot would be fully operational. The east building houses a family lodge area, complete with pool tables, fireplace, and board games, a camper cafe with a nice outdoor patio, an indoor pool, laundromat, and more. P.S. If you forget to bring your detergent along, they've got you hooked up for a small fee. Really nice, clean facilities. The real star of the show is Cascade Cove, a fun splash pad for the kids and a large pool for the whole family to enjoy. Of course, both were closed during our stay, but Keith and I took advantage of the thing we were most excited for in the area, the outdoor jacuzzis. The east side campsites have a slightly quieter vibe to them. Many spots are fairly shaded, while a handful, specifically on Outer Loop Drive, are full sun. Almost all spaces in this area are back in only. A very quick ride along the nearby bike path will bring you to the quaint paddle boat pond, vacant in the crisp September air. And further on down the path, you'll find a picturesque bass fishing pond and fountain. The last stop on our tour is the Woodland Drive campsites, which is really just a small forested area that gives the impression that it just wants to be left alone. Nothing negative about it, but I got the impression that the people staying here were longer term campers. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it certainly was one of the least active areas I explored. Perfect if you're looking for a quiet spot. Our site was number nine on the east side, a partially shaded back in location. We really loved this area, but after night three, we were one of the only campers left along this stretch of sites. Very spontaneously, we asked the check-in desk if we'd be able to move spots for our final night just to be in an area among other campers. Because there were so few RVs checking in that day, the staff told us we could pick whatever site we wanted, no fees to change. Yes, this might have been considered crazy to some, but we had a blast driving around nailing down the quote-unquote perfect camping pad for our last night. We settled on campsite 233 in the main section. This location was on top of a small hill that overlooked many sites nearby. It was also a spacious and level pull-through spot. It was perfect to us and an ideal place to conclude our stay in Lake George. Now for a couple of tips on things to do nearby. My first recommendation would be to get out on the lake. You are visiting Lake George for a reason and I'm pretty sure a boat is the best way to experience it. 
For us, we stumbled upon Lake George Boat Rentals right in town and put our names in for a one hour pontoon boat rental. We were there on a weekday during off season, so it was super easy to grab a spot. They don't take advanced reservations. After a quick safety briefing, we were out on our own sailing around the lake. I love the freedom of not being tied to a tour and just given the ability to explore wherever we wanted. I honestly wish we had brought lunch with us and booked a longer rental. It was such an enjoyable time. My next suggestion is to take advantage of the Warren County Bikeway, which runs right alongside the Lake George RV Park. This nine mile long bike path connects Glen Lake to Lake George, and we used it as a way to ride down to Lake George itself. I believe that portion was roughly five miles of the path. Really special shout out to Beach Road Bait and Tackle, who we rented our mountain bikes from. They're right in Lake George and thoroughly on top of bike tune-ups and safety. After playing around on that bike for a few days, I think I'm gonna look into buying a Trek mountain bike in the near future. Lastly, two quick spots to grab a bite to eat, and I mostly point them out for the nostalgic fun they offer. A&W All-American Food was a pit stop for us on our bikes near the lake. I understand this is a chain, but I've never been to one. Good old chicken tenders, burgers, and more. The second place is Martha's, which looks like a straight out of the 50s ice cream shop. It was absolutely delicious, and I imagine a staple of any Lake George trip. Though it was an unusual time to be in Lake George given the pandemic and traveling during the early fall, our stay at Lake George RV Park was still exactly what we needed, a relaxing and safe place to indulge in nature. With endless amenities and an emphasis on cleanliness and hospitality, I can't recommend this campground enough and hope you too can one day enjoy a visit. I hope you found this video helpful for your vacation planning. Thanks for watching.